Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Glenn Johnson part number 104S ADJ in a US 32D finish. That decal is awfully small to see there, but that is indeed a 104S 32D ADJ. The ADJ model adjustable permits an adjustable um, stop uh, location after the installation, whereas a standard, a typical, a, a traditional, a regular overhead stop does not permit any adjustment after the fact. Um, when you install an overhead unit traditionally, when you template the entire installation out and you prep your door and frame for that, you are templating it based on that degree of dead stop or hold open um, or degree of opening that the door and frame call for for that application. So what we'll do is start with this this video will be in two parts an overview of the series what we're dealing with what are the options uh, and then talking about the installation. So just quickly we're doing a 104S this is a stop model only and is the only model that is permitted to be used on a fire rated door all of the other variants have a degree of hold open or they're not free swinging. Um, and as you know, a um, only a stop model uh, is compliant because, as you know, fire doors must be self-closing, they must be self-latching, and they must be free swinging. Those three rules, self-closing and self-latching are the cardinal rules, but it also needs to be free swinging. So the friction um, model cannot be used either, the friction hold open. Um, and we'll talk about those different features. Let's jump to the more difficult aspect of the uh, video talking about the installation aspect. And there are two links below this video. One is to the product catalog or the cut sheet goes over the 100 series then the installation instructions for the 10 or the 100 ADH model a ADJ model forgive me so let's take a look at this material what we have is in the installation instructions they are admittedly a bit intimidating when it's the first time that you're looking at them but I assure you that they're not. Um, the drawing seems to be a bit convoluted, but after you dig deep and root around, and any experience that you have with doors and frames will certainly be of great benefit because you'll immediately start to understand what certain you know, drawings mean and what they're referring to. The bottom line is this. You need to prep a channel in the top of the door. This is a, the 100 is an overhead concealed. Um, nothing surface mounted, everything's gonna be mortised to the door and to the header. You need to prep a channel in the top of the door. You need to prep a channel in the header. That's all there is to it. You need to cut the face of the door so that your arm can come out from the channel. When you mortise the top of the door for a channel, it's recessed below the top of the door. Therefore, for the arm, if this arm is my channel and this arm is the arm, it needs to articulate like this, which means you have to cut the face of the door to permit that action. It's that simple. The header is prepped for the what would be the jam bracket in this case, the adjustable jam bracket, whereas with a traditional model, it's just a rectangular piece of steel that you attach after it's been prepped uh, with reinforcements plates, welded in, drilled and tapped, things of that nature. So a channel in the header, uh, a rectangular prep in the header, a rectangular prep on the top of the door, and then the top of the door needs to have the face cut out for the arm to come out. That's it. That's the basic principle. They all work on the same principle, at least all the ones that I can think of. So the installation instructions for the ADJ have three pages. One page is going to be the chart or the table by which you derive your dimensions. Every manufacturer of overhead stops has a page like this. So that's easy. The uh, part of the other two pages is dedicated to determining what data you're using on that third page. Um, so right there we've kind of eliminated half of the installation instructions at being boiled down to the essence of what they actually are. Um, and then because this is an AG, ADJ, a, a little bit of additional information is required. But 
what I like to do for the purposes of this video or reviewing it along with me is to have the installation instructions open up in two instances. Page three and then make sure it's rotated in the proper orientation so that we can then look at pages one and two. Page four doesn't matter, it's a blank page. So in page one, what they're telling you is determine the mounting being used from the illustration below. And admittedly, the Allegiant properties, Ives, Ives and Glenn Johnson, they sometimes have drawings, at least to me, are a bit initially confusing because I'm not sure what they're referring to, the way that it's drawn. But ultimately, after you kind of figure it out, and if you have to call technical support, do so to ask for clarification. They're quite exceptional there. Um, and once you get that technical support clarified, what you're stuck on, then it becomes pretty obvious. So determining the mounting being used from the illustration below. The illustration below shows you an overhead view or a plan view of what a door and frame would look like in a plan perspective. So what you're seeing is they're referring to, on the left side, frame reinforcement. On the right side of that, you've got frame reinforcement, then you've got door reinforcement. The frame reinforcement they're showing is if you're looking from the top of the header down. So what you're looking at is literally this, this bracket here. More appropriately shown um, Now uh, that hold open point is set on that bracket. So the bottom line is they're showing it like this. Your frame bracket, except that your door, you know, is over here. Okay. You've got your header bracket and then you've got your door bracket. The door bracket's the long channel. And then they have, so the bottom line is this short portion is what's going to go to the header. This long channel is what's going to go to the door itself. Okay. The frame reinforcement, they're referring to the fact that that's what you're looking at because it's titled the, the frame. It's the header is what it is. Then you've got the door reinforcement that is shown and an overhead view. So what, we're, what I'm trying to explain is this is the frame portion, this is the door portion, this long piece down here with these two springs. You'll see a number of you'll see a you'll see letters A B C D E F and L. Um, very confusing. It's not. After we go through it, on the left of there, that those drawings absolutely confuse me. There's no doubt. A and C, B and F. You've got all these dimensions. So the dimensions are simply this. The easy ones are the D and the L. D is literally the length of this door channel. And we're going to get to what that is on the chart. If I put a tape measure on this channel, it's going to give me a dimension. And I'll be able to find that on the, on the, on the chart. It's the D dimension. The L dimension is the length of the channel and the header. Okay, that's two of them right there. The, another two dimensions that you have to know is how far over from the edge of the door do you put the channel? And how far over from the jam in the header do you place the header portion? That's two more dimensions. That's your F and A dimension. Your B dimension is literally for reference only. Nice to have it there. I'm not sure why it's mandatory to have it there. Um, so we've covered the physical length of the door channel, physical length of the header portion. Where to put it on the door, where to put it on the frame. That's four dimensions. A and D, F and L. B for reference only. The E dimension we'll get to when we talk about the cut in the face along with the C dimension. So those, not just yet. Now you've got these letters in your head. Okay, let them go for right now. To the right of there, we have to determine what is our point of reference. So what is the door hung on? Center hung pivots, probably not, but it could be. Uh, this will certainly double act without any trouble at all. 
Okay, not a problem. This will absolutely double act. Is it hung on butt hinges or offset pivots? That has to be calculated. Or is it hung on swing clear? And that can be a butt hinge. It can be a overhead concealed, uh, pardon me, it can be a continuous hinge, obviously. Up above, step 1A, determine mounting being used from the illustration below. Select the mounting group, B, select the mounting group from the chart below. Most continuous hinges are grouped with 4.5 inch wide butt or 4.5 inch swing clear hinges. Agreed. Using C, using the mounting group number and the overhead holder or stop size, find A, C, D, E, and L dimensions from the chart on page 3. For dead stop, you're going to add 9 16 to the A dimension. Um, C note D for information about dead stop. Okay, let's forget about the dead stop for a moment. So, using the page one lower right side, what is our mounting method that we're using? You can see that you've got door thickness column. Okay, let's just assume inch and three quarter. Um, a We've got a four inch wide hinge, we've got a four and a half inch wide, a five inch wide hinge. Three quarter inch offset pivot, four inch swing clear, four and a half inch swing clear, five inch swing clear. Center hung pivot, those are your only options. They do not list an inch and a half offset pivot. Um, the most common is, is gonna be a four and a half inch wide hinge. Not talking about the height, it can be five by four and a half, but we're talking about the width. When the hinge is laid open in front of you, it's four and a half wide. Um, and that is a mounting group two. If you are doing a, a typical continuous hinge, you'll also be in mounting group two. So if you have the document open twice, look over at page, at your page three, your um, table by which we're going to derive these dimensions. So now we're in mounting group two. There are three groups there. You can ignore one and three. They don't apply. Now, on the left side, you're going to figure, you're going to look only at the row that applies to the model. We're doing a 104, not a 103, a 105, or a six. We're doing a 104. Now, why a 104? That's back to the product catalog. And we'll go over that after we go through the installation instruction. A 104 model is specifically meant for a 104S model. I want to clarify that. 104S is specifically for a door opening from 33 and 1 16th of, of an inch up to 39 inch. So the model that you're using is based now on your door opening. You, all, you certainly know your door opening width. For our example, it's three foot, so 36 inch. So we know that we're dealing with a 104. So when we look back to our table, when we look at table three, we know that we're dealing with a 104. Now, focus only on the row that applies to the system of measurement that you're using, imperial or metric. So we're gonna be looking at imperial, 104. So what we talked about was dimension, the easy stuff first to give some confidence. Look at dimension D and L. D and L in your table. D in a 104 is 26 and 5 16 That's the length of the channel in the door, right? I put my tape measure on the door channel. It's 26 and 5 16 Now it starts to make sense. The L dimension is the length of the header portion, and that is... 12 inch. Okay, so my door portion ought to be 12 inch. Sure enough, it's right on the money at 12 inch. So two of those four dimensions that we need, now you say, oh, that makes sense. Then the question becomes is how far over from the jam, from the jam do I place this? That's then going to be determined on, uh, that is your, on the jam, that is your F dimension. Your F dimension on a 104, that's going to be four and three quarter inch. So now you know that your header portion is 12 inch long, and we know that we are doing a 
prep that is going to be four and three quarter from the jam. So four and three quarter, then you're going 12 inch over. That's the space you're going to occupy yourself in. The other dimension is your A dimension. Okay, so now we talked about how your D dimension is 26 and 5 16 we confirm that. Looking back now at your A dimension, you have 5 and 5 eighths. So on the top of the door to where your channel is going to begin, you are at, uh, you're at your A dimension of 5 and 5 eighths. Now you know where to place them, how far they are. The B dimension that's also there that they call reference only, that's going to tell you where your arm is going to be positioned based on the degree of the, the degree that you're working on. Um, this is an adjustable model. This adjustable model via the set screws that they refer to, two at the top and one at the bottom, you're going to be able to, after the installation period, determine that degree of, in this case, stop. Now they talked about dead stop. For dead stop, that means when you operate this door and you get it to where it stops, you can then push it a little bit further. And that's because of these springs that are here. Okay, I can further compress that when I open the door. If you want it to dead stop at uh, that dimension, for dead stop, add 9 16 to the A dimension from the chart. See note D for in information about dead stop. Let's look down at note D. Dead stop DS templating may be used on hold open friction and stop only models, but should not be used on SE models. The DS position is reached when the shock spring is fully compressed. When DS templating is used, the initial degree of stop will be 5 to 7 degree less than the DS opening for use on doors opening back to back against a wall or an obstruction. So what that means is if you're going to template your unit, if you're going to set this to go to 90 degree, it's going to go 5 or 7 degree more because I can push the door and it's going to compress the stop. As you add that 9 16 of an inch to your A dimension, you're moving it a further away from the hinge. We're going to talk about that in a moment. That means that when you get your door to the point of where you had set it, it's going to five or seven degree stop. The dead stop is when you then continue to push it. And that's where that nine sixteenths come in. So a dead stop is when pushing the door further than that will cause steel to, 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 to break, hardware to break, etc. So be mindful, uh, if you have a, an absolute hard stop point, you need to calculate the dead stop, add 9 sixteenths, understand that your degree of where the unit's going to stop is five to seven degree less than where otherwise, but if you need to have an absolutely dead stop, you might have a, a lever or a trim on a door opens up to 90 degree, but you need to have it kick in you know, at 85 degree or so because you have a glass window there. So that hardware cannot get close enough to be able to have the lever hitting the glass or whatever the obstruction might be. Now, we talked about the A dimension. The A dimension is a reference point from the vertical axis of pivoting. That's a fancy way of saying the center of the hinge. So if I had a hinge in my hand, the center of the barrel, that's where your A dimension is being calculated from not from the edge of the door, not from the barrel of the hinge itself, not from the jam. The A dimension is the vertical axis, the vertical axis of the point by which the door rotates on. And that's what they're referring to in those somewhat cryptic drawings that they have there. Um, and that now gives you all of the information to say, okay, I know, ex I know in my head now where this stuff has to be placed. I know what my point of reference is. I've got a dead stop model, I'm going to compensate for that. If I want, if I want it to behave like a dead stop model. Uh, and then let's just look at the rest of the notes. A note, hollow metal frame should be properly reinforced with a 3 16 minimum thickness by 18 inch long minimum mounting plate. That would be for the header, uh, hollow metal frames. Hollow metal doors should be properly enforced, reinforced with a 3 16 minimum thickness plate. That's going to have to, that won't run the entire length. You're just going to have your mounting plates inside the door. 
uh, minimum 3 16 that will allow you to attach the door channel to. Uh, C is stop only units are permitted on many fire door applications. However, mechanical hold open devices that require manual release are not permitted for use on any fire door as outlined in NFPA 80 or 101. Contact Glenn Johnson or your local rep for assistance. If it's not free swinging, if it's hold open, if it's selectable hold open, it's a no go on a fire door. Um, now, the next thing that we'll look at will be the 100 adjustments, uh, and we'll scan that because I don't think any of it really applies to what we're working on. Now, in the adjustments, the 100 adjustments, if you have a hold open adjustable model, you can literally um, not only turn it on or off, hold open, you know, optional, you can disable hold open. Um, but you can also increase and decrease the amount of hold open tension required to push the door or to pull the door off of, push the door onto hold open or to pull it off of hold open. Uh, below that, friction tension adjustment, friction unit only. So if you're doing a 100 or 104F, a friction hold is, you'll see very often in a, hospital situation, a patient room, the bathroom and the patient room, there will be a large door, three foot eight, three foot six, that size door. You will see an overhead stop on there that is a friction, meaning you can take that door and place it anywhere you want it, and it will stay in that position until it's pushed because of friction that's set on the unit. That's very handy because you want the door the users want the door, they don't want it open all the time, they don't want it closed all the time, they want it to stay um, maybe 20 degrees ajar, whatever it might be. Every time I walk into a hospital room, the, the only time that door is closed is when it's occupied. All other times it's ajar, and that friction holder permits that to stay exactly where it's been placed. Well, that it exhausts apparently the notes. There are screw de details that are here, the screw package is indeed included. You're going to get some monster screws. Um, if you've got a wood door, they're giving you two number... If you have a wood door, let's cut these out, take a look at them. And that's another thing that I, I always do before I start anything, whether it's installing something, cutting for something, making a video for something. I always stop and make sure I've got all the parts, and that's what we're doing here. If you have a wood door, you're getting two number 18 by 3 inch pan head Phillips drive wood screws. That's what's going to go in the top of the channel down, sunk into the door. If you have a metal door, you're going to get two 5 16 18 by inch and a half Um, you're going to get two 5 16 18 inch and a half machine screws, pan head machine screws. That will be for the door into the reinforcement channel that's there. Um, for the jam, it will give you two number 14 inch and a half sheet metal screws, round head or pan head Phillips sheet metal screws. Then for a metal jam, you will get two quarter 20 by three quarter flathead, uh, pardon me, Phillips drive pan head machine screws. There are extra screws here and I don't know why. They've got extra screws here. I don't see anywhere on the device where we're going to use those. Um, it is certainly atypical that extra screws are included. It makes me think that there must be a reason uh, why they're here. Now, and if we discover that, we'll talk about that. Back to the mounting method. Um, if Concealed hinges have been popular for decades. Concealed hinges in the last couple of decades have been far more common than they ever were because there are more people making them, or at least there's more people making them that are getting them marketed to you know, the American, or you know, client base. The issue with these units is that you have to discuss with the factory up front 
before you purchase the material, the hinge that you're using it with. They do have a reference to the SOS 220. Whether it be SOS or Sugatsuni or Tectus and all of the other people who make these concealed hinges, SOS is not adjustable at all, but the Tectus certainly is, the Sugatsuni certainly is, where you can adjust those in three axi, laterally, vertically, um, the depth of the hinge prep to account for margins on the door. What they all share in common, however, is in a hinge, butt hinge, standard full mortise or a swing clear, pivots, either center hung or offset, that imaginary line, that vertical axis of pivoting doesn't float at all. It doesn't move. It's a plumb line that everything rotates around. Your sauce, your tectus, etc. That vertical axis of pivoting actually floats, floats through the opening. It moves. That needs to be discussed with the factory up front so that there's no confusion about where you're going to template everything. That absolutely applies in all instances to eliminate the guesswork. What you can encounter is a problem where, well, first of all, you might use the wrong mounting method and it doesn't work correctly. I've had people call and tell me, yeah, that, that overhead uh, stop you sold me seems to not work really smoothly. Well, that's weird. It's just a simple slide track. I mean, it's, is it bent? That would, you know, that would tell me, is something broken? No, it all looks good. Well, okay, so what size is the door? What is it made of? What size is the frame? What's it made of? Okay, great. The hinges. What are the hinges? Well, I got them Tectus hinges. Stop. Okay. Um, compensations are sometimes made when you've got that floating vertical axis of pivoting type hinge. But what's more important initially is that you get it templated, quoted, based on that required templating because sometimes the price changes. So I've had people order up a dozen units or they'll get a price from me in June for a dozen units. In December when they order the units we requote it and then they're then they decided on using sauce hinges. Stop. That requires special templating and the factory charges for that in some instances because they literally they will, this day and age, they're going to have a piece of paper that's going to come out and say, this is what you use. But if you're using a hinge that they don't have any paperwork on, there's going to be an upcharge for them to create the templating for that order. So get that quoted up front so you know exactly what it is that you're dealing with. That's super crucial. So we've gone over everything on page one. Page two talks about, it's showing us the channel. Step two, locate F and L dimensions on the frame. Note that the F dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. As shown means back to page one, upper right hand area. It's the center of the vertical axis of pivoting. If you've got a hinge, it's the center of the barrel. Mortise for the jam brack, bracket track, tracked as shown. For metal frames, use a number seven drill and a quarter 20 tap in two places. For wood frames, drill a 3 16 pilot hole in two places. So what they're saying here is for your jam bracket, you can see those two holes at either end. That's what we're preparing the header for. The header is super easy because all you're doing is mortising a channel uh, 12 inch long, inch and a quarter wide. Okay, It's half inch thick. And when we look at the... That's all you need to know. There are some there are some drawings down below. It doesn't refer to this. So a half inch deep, 12 inch long, inch and a quarter wide. You've got reinforcements there. Great. Screw it in. Well, don't screw it in just yet, but you're done. There's nothing else to do. It's that simple. It's like you are putting in a really unusually shaped latch bolt that's 12 inch tall and inch and a quarter wide. There's nothing different about it. Or a mortise lock body would be more appropriate as an example. Um, now, let's move on to step three because then we're going to talk about the prep that needs to be done in the face of the door to allow that arm to come out um, you know, as, as we discussed uh, earlier. So let's take a look at, at step three now. Okay, now looking at step three, refer to illustration below and on sheet one for the following notes. Locate A and D on the center line of the door Note that the A, okay, so 
what they're saying is in the center line of the thickness of the door. Don't bias it towards one side or the other, right? If you've got an inch and three quarter door, that center line should be seven eighths. But if it was me, I would put a um, I would put a caliper on the door. Wood doors, inch and three quarter wood doors, they don't measure 1.75. They measure 1.71. I would put my center line on the exact thickness. If you have a 14 gauge steel stiffened door, it's not inch and three quarter, it's not inch and three quarter. That's going to be 1.8125. It's going to be thicker. Center of the door um, is what you'll do. Note that the A dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. Yes, your A dimension is the vertical axis of pivoting again to the edge of the channel in the door. B under three, mortise for the channel is shown if required. For 100H hold open version, mortise for hold open lock mechanism, you'll do some preparation in the face of the door for the control knob that you can turn the hold open on or off. We're not doing that, you don't need that hole, you'll discard that. You will uh, ignore that hole. Locate C and E dimensions in the top of the door. Note that note that the C dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. Yes, we've we've covered that. The C dimension again is um, referred to as the center line of the hinge, although it doesn't really appear to be that way in the drawing. D mortise for arm cut out as shown. Now let's take a look at what they're calling out on D. So D is on page one is shown on the opposite side of the door as to where you need to prep it. And of course it's way out of scale. So if it was in scale that D dimension would, would be much longer. It's helpful, the, the, the proper way to look at this is below section three on page two to look at the cross section. It's not a cross section, to look at the elevation of the door. They're referring to your channel cutout, which is the dashed lines. But what you're gonna do is your arm cutout. Your arm cutout is going to be literally you're taking the door, and when you look to the right of that, you'll see two cross sections, a double acting door, where you're gonna prep that on both sides so the arm can go on both sides of the door. For a single acting door, on the right side of that is where you kind of see the cross section of the door, and you can say to yourself, ah, I see, that door doesn't extend all the way up, even though the drawing's a little funny, it's a little, the drawing could be more accurate. Or, or more realistic, I think. On the right side of the drawing, what was an inverted top channel, the right portion of the inverted part of the door is gone. Um, so that arm cutout is going to be, it's a quarter inch thick, or quarter inch deep in the face of the door. So when you, when you look at that door and you open it, and you look up at the track, the track's gonna be coming right out of that quarter inch, you're gonna see the rest of that quarter inch prep. You don't notice it, because it looks like the door is supposed to be that way, because it is. So that arm cutout on page one is the E dimension, right? Yeah, so your E dimension now is going to be called in on page three in your table. So mounting group two, 104, go over to the E dimension. And they want that to be 26 and a quarter. So that's a really huge prep on that door. A standard model would not have such a large prep on the face of the door. However, that track does need to move freely from outside of the door area. Because it's adjustable, they have to account for the minimum degree of opening to the maximum. So if this was a fixed model, not adjustable, that E dimension would be substantially less. Uh, it, it would be noticeably less. Locate C 
and E dimensions on the door. Note that the C dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. C. Okay. So you need to know where your your C to, talking about the arm cutout from the center line of the door is your C dimension. Then is where your arm cutout starts for the length of the E dimension. So your C dimension in page three three and an eighth of an inch. Then you're going to go over the length of your E dimension. Uh, double acting doors, you're going to cut that on both sides of the door. For metal doors, drill, use a F drill. Use an F drill. I think what they're trying to tell us is the size of the drill bit to use for prepping that. Yeah, I th wasn't it a number seven? Isn't, isn't that what was referred to earlier? A number seven drill bit size? Let's take a look. Yeah, they say in step two, use a seven drill and tap quarter 20. This isn't going to be a number seven drill for a 5 16. You're going to need to properly drill and tap for that for that piece of hardware is, is the moral of that story. Step four, install a channel in the door with the shock spring towards the hinge of the door. So obviously the channel can go in one of two ways. That's going to go towards the hinge. Install the DRAM bracket tracked in frame. Skip C and D because we're not doing H models. Adjust the slider in the jam bracket track to the desired degree of opening, which is the B dimension, and tighten the set screws. That does apply to your ADJ model. Those two set screws that you see there. Okay. Those set screws that are right there is where you're going to set your degree of opening. So the B dimension is there for reference, meaning once you determine the degree of hold open that you want, then apply your B reference dimension uh, for the location of the jam to your center line, which is here. Okay, so as you're looking up, I mean, you're going to see all of this as you're looking up. So this is your reference point for your B dimension from the jam to that, uh, that axis. That's it. You've installed this piece of equipment. If you, if you have a door and a frame from your manufacturer, you're going to order it prepped. You're going to order it reinforced. You're going to order it prepped and reinforced for this hardware. Everything being accurate and correct, which you'll measure first before you start to hang the door. This is four screws plus setting your adjustment for your hold open. Um, it's that simple. If you have a fixed non-adjustable model, it's four screws. You're done. You put these up before you, before you put your door closers. Um, closers and equipment like this can certainly um, work to complicate it, the installation of each other. When you are laying out this type of hardware, when, you're, when you are specking it, uh, certainly, when you are detailing it, everyone needs to make sure that the hardware is compatible, meaning you don't have to run a screw through a piece of through a piece of the real estate on the door that is being occupied by a piece of hardware. And you will really find that when you are dealing with door closers and overhead concealed stops, coordinators, kick plates and surface vertical rod exit devices, kick plates and kick down door holders, um, lock sets and armor plates. You know, all of these things, these hardware conflicts need to be resolved. So what I do is I simply, what's the part number of each? I get the templates pulled out and I look at it. What's my mortise size? Where's my hardware going to occupy? Where do my holes have to go? Um, 
and I lay all that out and I make sure that there's not going to be any conflict. So your door cutout is three quarter inch if we're looking at page what is page two on the left hand side in the center. I don't think that the closer is going to be nearly that close to the, uh, the cl uh, apparel arm mount is going to be nearly that close, but I would sure want to know that. I, uh, well, here's what I do want to know, that 5 sixteenths hole for the control knob for the hold open, I want to know if that's going to be in the way of anything. So I'm going to look at that because once you detail all this material and it's the hardware is ordered and purchase orders and approved and then your hollow metal guy calls up and says, yeah, I'm looking at the templates. How are you, how are you planning on controlling that hold open? And they already know the answer. It's a conflict. Um, but, the, you know, how are you planning on doing that? Are you going to take the closer off every time? <laughs> so be mindful to pull your templates and look at all that stuff. Now we're going to move to a review of the. We're going to move to a review of the product brochure or, or cut sheet. Now, the final portion of the video will be to discuss the 100 series in an overview type sense. It is a model that I would consider their flagship model. The 100 heavy duty concealed mount is the mount that's going to be specced all the time for these heavy duty applications whether it be a school or a hospital or a sports stadium or an airport, you'll see the 100 spec. Overkill certainly for a residential application. However, uh, Glenn Johnson is a comprehensive manufacturer of overhead concealed and surface mount items for uh, standard duty, light duty, medium commercial grade, heavy duty commercial grade, um, and Overhead stops are really not that often used in all applications where they are perfect solutions to a problem. You can have a residential application where you've got a small powder room and the door literally cannot open to 90 degree because it will hit the commode. Um, people, uh, don't worry, I'll put a hinge pin door stop. No, that's not a good idea. It's a French door. It's a 10 light French door uh, with opaque glass and it's going to open to a commode, and your and the answer is is not a three dollar hinge pin door stop. Um, and people are are, are understandably so uh, hesitant to install this type of hardware because of the cost. But here's the bottom line: the cost to prep the door, if you're manufacturing the doors, is not very substantial. The cost of a standard duty concealed mount is not very substantial at all. And considering the alternative of a door being broken, uh, glass being broken, the cost of that alone in one occurrence, the damage to health and safety. Um, overhead stops should be considered uh, far more often than they actually are. So the 100 is going to allow a range of 85 to 110 degree uh, templating. That's what you're typically, typically going to deal with. So if you know that if you're dealing with a door that needs to go past 110, then you have to look for alternative solutions. The 100 series is available in five models. The, one, the 100H, that's a hold open. Uh, that's where you're going to um, hold the door open at a predetermined position uh, for whatever the period of time that you'd like to hold it open, permitting an unobstructed flow of traffic through the opening. Okay? There is also a selective um, hold open model uh, as we had talked about earlier with the control knob access in the face of the door. There is a 100F, that's a friction, we discussed that. That is the restroom, that is the bathroom, restroom room within the patient room where they can leave that in a, a jar position and it won't move unless you apply force to it. It won't just move on its own. 100S is the stop model that we've gone over here at length. And then there's a 100 SE special stop only. When stop only models are used in conjunction with single point hold open electronic door closers, they may be ordered without the shock absorbing mechanism. Uh, used as an auxiliary stop with those closers, they will prolong the life of the closer. The stop location is adjustable using an Allen wrench on the back, on the stop block located in the channel. Um, so, you know, a unit specifically intended for those single point holders that you'll find all the time. Available in 
um, three options, adjustable, which is the model that we happen to have here. They can do a CJ model, jam bracket, when you're using it with an LCN 5030 series closer. There will be times when something needs to be adjusted, moved, uh, a conflict resolved. Obviously with the 5030, you have to have a CJ model of the Glenn Johnson 100. Then you can do a pin and socket security screw. So security screws are going to be incredibly common. Hospitals, healthcare, institutions, airports, schools. You'll see security fasteners often. are also un, uh, non-handed, improved compatibility with door closers based on how they've been templated and engineered, and they will work on single or double acting doors and appropriate for interior or exterior applications. You obviously will see these very often in exterior applications. Uh, reduced door prep. Um, I can't compare that to what it would have been prior, except that they were always simple to install. Two rectangular preparations off a certain dimension. Preparation in the face of the door for single acting. Function conversion kits are available. Uh, that's nice because you can order a stop version to find out that you need a hold open version. Uh, so the ability to convert the unit is a relatively recent development. Um, and people have most certainly uh, ordered those units, um, those conversion units, to find out that the function was originally incorrect. Heavy gauge brass or 300 series stainless steel. Uh, this uh, this uh, model offers the broadest range of finishes in the industry. So you can do these in a variety of finishes as seen, about 10 of them that are listed there in the product brochure. Your brasses, your bronze, your chromes, your stainless sprayed finishes, meaning powder coated as well. That can be done. The As we scroll through the product brochure, the functions are actually defined. And I would certainly recommend that you review that if you're looking for an overview of the series. Dead stop templating, we discussed that when we were talking about the installation instructions. That needs to be thought through. Um, I have had instances where it's been installed and damage was still done after the fact. And then as the client went back and said, what's wrong? What, why was this installed incorrectly? Well, it wasn't. It just wasn't set to a dead stop point. The options are listed, the ADJ, the CJ, and the SOC, adjustable, closer, bracket for the 5030 LCN and the security fasteners. Scroll, continuing to scroll through, we get to a, a, a cleaner drawing of what this material looks like when it's installed in the standard non-ADH version and the standard jam bracket version is there as well. And the most important thing that I always refer to, and I think everyone does, is the 100 series sizing chart. How big is the door? Meaning the door opening, how wide is it? What function do you need? And that's your part number. So be mindful um, of what you're dealing with in those instances. You will note that there is no center hung available version for doors smaller than 27 and a 16th of an inch in terms of a door opening. So I believe that there's someone who does manufacture it. I just don't remember who. I know I've sold it in the past. Or it could have been a different model uh, from Glenn Johnson that would get center hung down to that small of a door. And then finally on the last page is going to be the how to order. Um, very simple. So you're dealing with a 10 at the beginning of the part number. Then you give it the size, the 4 in this case, for the range of door opening. Any function, the function definition that you'll need to declare, you will need to declare that. Then your finish and any options. So we go from a really complicated set of installation instructions to distilling it down to being, oh, okay, this is not so difficult, um, to all the way through the how to order where it then becomes quite simple and straightforward in terms of how to put these items together. Okay. These products are used in those applications where you need to have the absolute most durable piece of equipment stopping the door. Uh, where I see these all the time is on the, out, the exterior doors of sports stadiums. Standard equipment for those applications naturally. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Glenn Johnson products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as link to the full product catalog. Any questions on our part number 104S and a 32D finish or any other Glenn Johnson product,
please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.